So I normally reserve these meditations on the Sunday Gospel for those that are members through Buy Me A Coffee, but this is so good that I had to share it. Yesterday I went to Mass at a church. We just happened to go to a 4 p.m. Mass that was the most convenient one with my wife, and the priest gave an amazing explanation on a Gospel that I have never really understood, and it's good for us to meditate on. So yesterday the Gospel was from Matthew 20, 1 through 16, and we could look at it in two ways. Jesus says twice, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And we can take that to mean that those that put themselves first in this life will be last in the kingdom of heaven and vice versa. Those that put themselves last will be first in the kingdom of heaven. And we have two people, two examples that are back to back. Now, the gospels will often put these things back to back so that we can compare, contrast, and get a real idea of what's going on. The previous person was the scripture scholar, the one that you would expect would put himself last, would serve others, and would be generous. It would truly be an image of God. And this is a warning to us, who as Catholics think that by being Catholic, we're magically holy or magically like God. That That is often the last thing happening. So he was someone who was challenged by Jesus to sell everything that he had and to give money to the poor. Now that's very very specific. Scripture scholars at the time were wealthy because they had to pay a lot of money for the education, and they also had a lot of servants because they had a lot of free time on their hands in order to study. So this was a rich dude, probably with a lot of servants. He was probably a landowner, actually. A lot of times they don't say these things, but you can tell how Jesus is kind of really pushing into the situation by doing that. And so that's why Jesus asked him to sell what he has to give to the poor, not just to give up his money, but the fact of helping those that haven't been as lucky as him to give them a chance to have that. Now that's the invitation for us. And we often just deny it, say, oh no, that was just for the scripture scholar. That's not for me. I don't need to help the poor. We often excuse ourselves of these challenges. And I think we should be careful I think we're uh, doing something very dangerous there. And then the next person is the landowner, someone that you would least expect to be like God. But in this case, he is exactly modeling the heart of God. So we have these day laborers, and day laborers at that time are just like day laborers today. They get, they get paid very little, seven to twelve dollars an hour, and uh, and it's often hard to find work, and yet all of them have needs. They have apartments or houses or wives or whomever. They have people that they have to take care of. And so when the landowner hires all these different people, he realizes that the ones he hires at the at the very end, if he only paid them an hour, if he only paid them $10, how is that going to help their family? That's not being very merciful to them. Now, they may not deserve the full day's wage, but they're human too. And they have needs too. And so he decides to give them the full day's wage along with the other ones. And interestingly enough, the other day laborers, even though they know how hard it is to be a day laborer, they're angry that the ones that only worked an hour got paid so little. They're, they're envious, as it says, because he's generous. And that's how it is with us that often we want this strict justice. And the truth is, if God was just with you, you'd be in hell right now. That's the truth. Now, some of you maybe deny this and say, no, 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 no. I, if God gave me justice, I would be amazing. I, I'd be going straight into heaven. And, and you have no idea the holiness of God. And so the invitation is for us to have a heart like God, to have a heart like the landowner, and especially in situations where people don't deserve it. Let's say someone we're tipping them or or there's some way that we can help someone and and strictly speaking they only deserve two dollars for us to go beyond that for us to be merciful and love with our money one thing that i realize is that um we're stingy we say we believe in love all day long but when it comes to the money we don't do anything we hardly give it to our family members let alone to strangers so maybe there's someone in your life that does not deserve the money that you should probably give them. They don't deserve it, but they're human too. They have needs just like you. They have husbands and wives and houses and mortgages and all types of things as much as you do. And often when we're generous with those people 
and we choose the path of mercy, God returns it back to us a hundredfold. Even in terms of purgatory in several places, Jesus says, give alms and behold, all shall be made clean. Um, and in other places, when he says charity covers a multitude of sins, he's talking about alms there. Uh, he's talking about something that uh, uh, that hurts. So my friends, I thought this was an, an amazing way to see this gospel. Hope it helped you. Uh, keep supporting me through Buy Me a Coffee, either as a one-time donation or by becoming a monthly member in 5 10 or $15 increments. I'll see you in the next one.